welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. President Buhari restates commitment to delivering his promises on security, tackling corruption and repositioning the economy. Nigeria moves to seal new economic relations as the Vice President Oshibajo leads federal government delegation to the 2018 World Economic Forum, holding in Davos, Switzerland. Experts brainstorm on ways to deal with violent extremism in Nigeria at the Oluyemi Adeniji Foundation Symposium in Lagos. And former football star George Weir vows to transform the life of Liberians as he takes over as a country's president. Just a quick reminder that for more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. And log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. The Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. We also have access to the eyewitness feature with which you can share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and then follow the instructions. Let's take a look at some of the pictures that were sent in to us. And we can be begin with this one from GRA Road in Gombe State showing an accident scene. Our eyewitness reporter says the driver was making a phone call when he lost control of the vehicle. Still on accidents is this image from Oshun State. Our eyewitness reporter says the accident was caused by overspeeding and the poor state of the road. He's calling on the authorities to enlighten drivers. And next is this picture from Orile bus stop in Lagos State showing dirt in drainages and on the highway. Our eyewitness reporter is asking the relevant authorities to stop this act. And our final picture today shows an abandoned hospital project in the Wawalada area of Abuja. Our eyewitness reporter is calling on the government to complete it soon. And thanks a lot for all your pictures. Do send us some more. The federal government is introducing a joint partnership security governance initiative with the United States to tackle insecurity. The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Abdul Rahman Dambazo, explains that the nation's security challenges are better confronted through effective collaboration. But this is supported by the U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria, Stuart Symington, who pledged his country's support towards combating security challenges in Nigeria through information sharing. Mr. Symington and the Interior Minister spoke in Abuja at the inauguration of the Steering Committee for the Implementation of the Security Initiative. The government of Nigeria, under the leadership of President Muhammad Buhari, has prioritized transformation of its security sector, improving transparency and accountability across the public sector as key objectives. This policy emphasis emphasizes both recognizes the lapses and inadequacies of our internal security infrastructure and centralizes security as a cardinal deliverable of good governance and democracy. Our approach is necessarily citizen-centric. The heart of the partnership isn't just to listen, but what we, what you do together. It is such a joy to see with us here at this table and in the audience, the representatives of so many elements, of so many of those Nigerians who dedicate their lives every day to the future of your country. And I'm pleased to see Americans here too, looking for opportunities over the course of our time working together on this minister. And ladies and gentlemen, where we can share with you some of the things that have worked for us and others, and where we can learn from you some of the things that will work best for all of us. Now, security across the country is certainly on the front burner, and building trust in government systems is one of the strategies to deal with violent extremism in Nigeria. This approach has been proposed by the intellectuals who discuss the theme bridge building in response to violent extremism at the inaugural symposium of the Oluyemi Adeniji Foundation in Lagos, southwest Nigeria. Our correspondent, Ini John Nekwa, reports. 
It's the inaugural symposium of Oluyemi Adeniji Foundation for Strategic Studies and Conflict Resolution in honor of Nigeria's former ambassador to Austria, France, and Switzerland, Ambassador Oluyemi Adeniji. A gathering of intellectuals and family members, some of whom are trustees of the foundation, marks the birth of the foundation established with the objective to epitomize the values of integrity, fairness, and compassion which he stood for. To chair the event, the chairman of Channels Media Group and chairman of Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria, Mr. John Momo, opens the floor. I'm very happy with the overall plan of the foundation for strategic studies and conflict resolution, which plans to make this symposium a think tank, one that will be useful for policymakers and will no doubt be of great benefit to both the local and global communities. Which is why I would ask you to all join me once again in applauding the trustees and members of the identity family. The theme, bridge building in response to violent extremism, is dissected by a two-man panel made up of a trustee and member of the senior management board of the Islamic Education Trust, Mohammed Lemu, as well as a licensed clinical psychologist who is also an advisory board member to the Center for Global Health at the College of Medicine in the University of Illinois, Chicago, Dr. Chris Stout. Mental health is too often excluded from terrorism-related government initiatives. Oftentimes those in government think of terrorism when they think of terrorism. They think of communication systems, pushbacks of medications and supplies, and the like. And I think, therefore, regarding moving forward, it's important for leaders in particular to really try to get closer to the other, to try and understand where others are coming from. The discussion then narrows down to the situation in Nigeria and particularly the case with Boko Haram. The people seem increasingly alienated from government. It comes to a point, and, and, and this I believe is one of the reasons why uh, young people are easy, easily recruited by Boko Haram. About 50% of Boko Haram members had been involved in voting. They, had, they believed in the system, uh, but they lost hope and how things were handled later on just made them lose greater hope. Organizers of the symposium promised to take the ideas from intellectuals here to a point of implementation with relevant authorities. Our, our concern really will be to come up with the solutions and then hopefully with the interactions that we have with, uh, with government, with NGOs, with multilateral organizations, we will be able to impress on them not just the urgency of pushing forward specific solutions and putting them into practice, but more importantly, emphasize the simplicity of the solutions because I think a lot of the time leadership in particular feels daunted, feels overwhelmed by the effects of issues like extremism. This is the beginning of what the Oluyemi Adeniji Foundation plans to be an avenue for result-oriented mythology on themes related with conflict resolution. Ini John Mekwa reporting for Channels Television News. Meanwhile, reactions have trailed the proposals of experts who spoke at the inaugural symposium. Other dignitaries who are mostly former career ambassadors have suggested that attention be given to family values and interfaith interactions as ways to curb violent extremism. I served last as ambassador in Australia and I was involved in interfaith every year. There is an interfaith dialogue session in which everybody comes together, Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, and we discuss how can. I want to find out what is the level of that in this country. Families have broken down. Nobody is ready to train the child at home to say, go to the school. You don't know what is teaching, what is learning in the school. I think most of the discussions we have had is around extremism, from a religious perspective. But there are other causes. 
even before the insurgency and extremism uh, of you know, violent terrorist attacks uh, came to exacerbate internecine, ethnic, even political governance that is supposed to be a change issue has also become a peace and security issue. When the news at 10 returns, Ecobank Research Group expects Nigeria's economy to expand by 2.6% in 2018, consolidating recovery from recession. Do join us again.